Remember the verse that we read last week? Okay, apparently not. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Avartana Pustaka Maram Adhyayam. Adhana Nalam Vakyam Adhana Namal Karinyaricha Vaicha Devonam Namal Dhyanicha Dham. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Israel Kelka Ehova Namada Deva Mahunu Ehova Egan Tane. Just a review of what we did last week, what we meditated on last week. The word here in English. Kelkuga and the Malayalam Bakindem, Mula Padatham Padikim Bol, and the Arthan Padikim Bol, there are three distinct meanings associated with the word here. One, to listen attentively. Sraddiota Kelkuga. Two, to agree or to consent. Namal Kelkan the Vishayam, Namal Samadikia, Namaladro Yoji Kiga. The third is a call to obedience. In that word here, all three actions are required of us. So we, we're not simply listening for the sake of listening. We're not simply listening for the sake of knowledge. There is an active aspect of our life that has to join with this verse. You listened great. Do you agree with what's being said? Do you agree with the fact that the Lord is our God, that He is one? We should, we must agree, because those are the words of God. Now, having heard it, having agreed to it, do you obey? Does your life reflect the fact that the Lord is our God and the Lord is one? I ask the question, how many other gods do we have in our life? Whether we admit it or not, oftentimes other things, other persons take place in our heart that belongs to God alone. Perhaps we don't have statues in our houses. Perhaps we don't have idols or pictures in our rooms and so forth. But are there masters of your life that is not God? Deva Malade, Namada Jivatil Arangilim Ejamanai Irikinondo. Are there any other persons or things or desires that takes the place of God who have set up their place in our hearts? You know, we have a beautiful lobby in our church. And over the last 14 months that I've been here, I met a lot of people, I talked to a lot of people, I came to know family relations and different things. But it was the first time last Sunday that I realized that lobby becomes a confessional. What I mean by that is, when I walked out after service, about 10, 15 people stopped me and said, Pastor, why did you call out makeup as a God? Then I knew somebody's conscience was pricked. And then they asked me, why didn't you call this thing or that thing? You know, people have sleep as their gods. People have sports as their gods. People have working out, exercising as their gods. So people started confessing to me what other gods are in people's lives. And it all happened in that lobby. What, ha what happens is without us realizing, many, many other things, many other places, many other persons take the place of God that only God should have. But realizing that there may be other gods in our life. Realizing that something else or someone else may have taken the throne in our heart that only belongs to God is a great realization. That's when we start to say, okay, what do I need to do? How do I bring God back into the place where God needs to be? The Lord our God is one. That means no one else like Him and no one else besides Him. Deva Malada Veri Arimilla, E. Deva Malada Vero de Victicum, Asan Astanum, and the Jivotilla. But do we live a life 
in which we have evicted the real God from the thrones of our hearts. നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ നമ്മുടെ ഹൃദയത്തിൻ്റെ സിംഹാസനത്തിൽ നിന്നും ദൈവത്തെ മറിച്ച് കളഞ്ഞ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ദൈവത്തെ എടുത്ത് കളഞ്ഞ ജീവ അനുഭവത്തിലാണോ നമ്മൾ ജീവിക്കുന്നത് എന്ന് നമ്മൾ ചോദിക്കേണ്ട ഒരു ആവശ്യമുണ്ട് ഇഫ് ദാറ്റ്സ് എ കേസ് ക്വിക്ക്ലി ഐഡൻറ്റിഫൈ ക്വിക്ക്ലി ഡിറ്റർമിൻ വോ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ഓട്ട്സ് ടു ബി ഓട്ട് ടു ബി ആൻഡ് വിഷ്ലി വി ഷുഡ് ക്വിക്ക്ലി വിത്തൌട്ട് ഹെസിറ്റേഷൻ റിമൂവ് എവ്രി അതർ ബീയിങ് എവ്രി അതർ ഓബ്ജെക്ട് എവ്രി അതർ ഡിസയർ ഫ്രം അവർ ഹാർട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ഓൺലി ബിലോങ്സ് ടു ഗാഡ് we should say i am set free from bondage i'm not slave to anything anymore i am addicted to i'm not addicted to anything anymore i don't have any other master besides the king of kings and the lord of lords i'm not just singing what a powerful name it is i know in my life he holds that place his power is what sustains me i'm i'm not just singing what a wonderful name it is i know he alone is a wonderful aspect of my life we have to have that realization within us we should be confident in saying i'm not a slave to any other god my life is fully surrendered and fully surrendered to the holy god alone nammada jeevithane poornamaya samarpanam venam vera engum alla katto ee satya devathinodi maatram that's the only place but that surrendering comes with a heart full of joy my life is joyfully surrendered and my life is voluntarily surrendered നമ്മൾ ആരും ആരുടെയും പ്രേരണ കൊണ്ടല്ല നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തെ സമർപ്പിക്കേണ്ടത് മറ്റുള്ളവർ നമ്മളെ പ്രോത്സാഹിപ്പിച്ചേക്കാം ശരി നമുക്കൊരു ആഹ്വാനം തന്നേക്കാം ശരി പക്ഷെ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് യഥാർത്ഥമായ ദൈവത്തെ സമർപ്പിക്കണമോ സ്വയം മനസ്സോടെ നിങ്ങളെ തന്നെ സന്തോഷത്തോടെ കൂടിയാണ് ദൈവത്തിന് മുൻപാകെ സമർപ്പിക്കേണ്ടത് നോ വൺ ഹൗസ് ഷുഡ് ഡു ദാറ്റ് പാസ്റ്റർ ഇൻ സൗത്ത് ആഫ്രിക്ക ഇൻ ദ ലേറ്റ് നയൻറ്റീൻ സെഞ്ചുറി ഹിസ് നെയിം വാസ് ആൻഡ്രു മറി ഹി സെറ്റ് ദ ഫോളോയിങ് God is ready to assume full responsibility for the life wholly yielded to him. Purnamai devathine kiyadange jeevathinte poorna uttaravadam ejedukkuvan devam thayarai. That's the way we should live our life. We should say Lord this is all yours you have full responsibility. I'll give you an illustration a real life story of how this takes place. There was a man who lived in a beautiful country, a beautiful land. He and his family were very close. They had a great business. They made money over and over. And their business was to make idols, statues. And they would make gods and sell them one after the other. They made a lot of money doing that. But one day something unique happened. This man this young man who was to help help his father make all these idols and gods experienced something unlike any other time he has seen many gods in many forms being crafted and made in his father's business but all of a sudden he hears a voice a voice that he's never heard before a voice of a person that him whom he didn't recognize so he listens and he the voice said I need you to get away from these gods. He's like, "Really?" Then the voice said, "Not only get away from these gods, I want you to get away from this land." You guys are figuring out who it is right now. Then the voice of the Lord said, "Get away from this place and I will show you where you should go." Nee devangal ellam vittum maaranam. Ee desham onnu vittu maaranam. Naan kaanikkan irikkunna salathekku nee onnu poganam he did exactly as he was asked and as a result he became a great blessing ille parna adu pole anusarichu nee choike or otta devathinte shabdam kelkade or atte otte aaradhanikku pogade or otte pastor illade anega devangalde madhye jeevicha abraham yadarthama oru shabdam kettappol oru manasinu madiyum illade devathodu parni karthave njan idvare anubhavikkatha oru anubhavam itrayum devangale njan undaakkittu ende appan undaakkittu kelkatha oru shabdam njan kettu aa ketta shabdathinu poornamaya anusarikkuvan njan urappundu enikku dhairyam undu a life that is fully surrendered to god God, God is fully responsible for that life that is surrendered. 
Abraham did exactly what the Lord God asked him. Get away from these gods. Get away from this land and get away to the land where I will show you what happened. His name changed from Abram to Abraham. But before Abraham could receive that name change, before Abraham could receive the blessings that God promised him, God said, you know what, Abraham? I have to do one thing. I got to get all these gods away from you because there is only one God. The Lord is God is one. He is our God. I need you to realize all these things that you have made by your hands, those are not gods. I want, to, I want you to get away so that you can experience the blessing of a true and living God. So first thing God did, he removed the idols from Abraham's life. The second thing God did, that was not enough because Abraham, God knew just by removing it, there's going to be something else that may hold him back. So what did God do? Not just remove the idols, but God removed Abraham from the idols. See, oftentimes we think we just remove things from us. We distance ourselves and that is good enough. But sometimes whatever has gotten a hold of you has such a strong grip. Even when you remove it, you still go back to it. So what did God do? God removed the idols and then God removed Abraham from within the idols. Now I, I've spoken to young people in Dallas. I've spoken to young people here, even in this, my trip to uh, Kerala this, this, uh, this last week ago, two weeks ago. I spoke to a lot of young people. And during the camp, they gave us breaks to talk to and students can come and talk. It was heartbreaking to see how many people were addicted to certain things in their life. It doesn't matter what part of the world you live in. Because access is ready. Because things are so convenient. Because we lo have lost the fear of God that our pastor has been teaching us about. Because we've lost the seriousness of our life. Because we don't realize how much our, val how much our life is valued and precious. We have given ourselves into addiction. This young man comes to me during a break, sits there and starts to talk to me. He gets the first sentence out and he starts to weep. For the next three to four minutes, he couldn't say a word. He said, Pastor, I am struggling and I'm struggling. And then he started to weep. It's not enough that we remove the idols from our life. If God says, you, I need to remove you from within the idols, we must completely yield to that. We must completely surrender to that. If we do that, God makes sure that the Lord God is the only God who lives in our life. Our life is not going to be made by our life. Our life is not going to be made by our life. Our life is not going to be made by our life. What does this mean in our life today? How do you contextualize what's happening in your life to say what happened in Abraham's life? See, there might be relationships within you that is holding you back, that's taking the place of God that only God should have. There might be habits or desires that you have that only God should have the place of, but somehow those habits and desires have crept in and they have become gods in your life. There might be desires you have which become, or ambitions that you have which become and take the place of God that only God should have. And the Lord has been telling you, put away those idols. The Lord has been speaking to you and saying, put away those statues. Put away those false gods. Put away the things that you are addicted to. Put away the things that you are slave to and you haven't listened yet. And some of you are saying, yes, I have been able to do that. But if you allow the Lord God to be the only God in your life, not only will he help you remove the idols from your life, he will remove, from, remove you from within the idols so there is no residual pullback from what you were addicted to. The Lord is enough. But we have to allow the Lord to give, get rid of things in our life and if needed to move us away from those relationships and those habits and those desires. And the change that took place in Abraham's life Abraham's life was changed. 
യഥാർത്ഥമായ സത്യമായ ദൈവ ശബ്ദം കേട്ടപ്പോൾ adanisirichu munnotu irangiyappol when he obeyed the word of god he stepped out in faith just as god told him look at the change that takes place in abraham's life that's where we should focus do we know if the lord god is really our god here's one way to know one everywhere abraham went he set up an altar for the living god abraham evadellam poyo avadellam veedilla katto vaahanam illa kootayme illa there is no house there is no car there is no friends but everywhere abraham went along this journey he set up an altar for the heavenly god if the lord god is one and he is our god no matter where god places you you will make sure there's a place of worship in your life Abraham made sure now that I know the real God now that I know a living God now that I know a God who speaks to me I had to do one thing I must worship this holy God That's where we often fail or forget We forget that wherever God places us often times the comfort becomes our god often times the convenience becomes our god often times the blessings become our god and what has happened the altar that was supposed to be built and the altar where supposed to be worship is happening it's not happening there anymore why because you fo- so focused on the blessings which you have received valare anugraham lebicha abrahamum ee poya sthalath evadellam koodaram adicho avadellam yagapeedam padadu ഈ മക്കളെ നമ്മളത് ചെയ്യണം കേട്ടോ ഈ ദൈവമാണ് നമ്മുടെ ദൈവമെങ്കിൽ ദൈവം നമ്മൾ ഏത് സ്ഥാനത്താക്കിയാലും ഏത് അവസ്ഥയിലായിരുന്നാലും ഏത് പ്രതിസന്ധിയിലായിരുന്നാലും ഏത് പ്രയാസവലിലായിരുന്നാലും നമ്മൾ ഒരു കാര്യം ഓർക്കണം അവിടെയെല്ലാം ഒരു ആരാധന ഉണ്ടാകണമെന്ന് നമുക്കൊരു തീരുമാനം ഉണ്ടാകണം അങ്ങനെ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് ഉറപ്പോടെ പറയാൻ സാധിക്കും ഈ ദൈവമാണ് എൻ്റെ ദൈവം വേറൊരൊറ്റ ദൈവം എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഇല്ല എന്ന് if we can set up that altar if we can worship then we can confidently say he alone is my god and no one else the next thing abraham did everywhere he went he pursued peace even when he didn't get his way abraham inde tande ishtam onnum nadappilayillengilum abraham evadengilum poittundo avade ellam abraham samadhanam anubindurunnathu he pursued peace sondam anandravan when his own nephew and his workers created the conflict abraham didn't wasn't the one to say let me choose first since god called me then you take, choose whatever you want avadeyum samadhanam sukshikkan abraham paranju lote ninak ishtamulla nee therin eduthu lot you choose what you want and whatever's left i will go that way if if the lord god is truly our god we will always pursue peace hallelujah samadhanam undakunavar phagan mar endo avare peru devathinte makkal ennu vilikkapedum the ones who create blessed are those peacemakers they shall be called the children of god if we have the holy god as the only god in our life i will tell you in the midst of all of our problems we will not become selfish in the midst of all of our challenges we will not ask for my way or highway we will say you know what my god is the only god in my life i will pursue peace at all costs even if it doesn't mean even if it means i don't get my way എനിക്ക് എൻ്റെ ഇഷ്ടം സംഭവിച്ചില്ലെങ്കിലും നടപ്പിലായില്ലെങ്കിലും കുഴപ്പമില്ല ഞാനൊരു ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ പൈതലാണ് ദൈവം മാത്രമാണ് എൻ്റെ ദൈവം അങ്ങനെയെങ്കിൽ ഞാൻ സമാധാനം മാത്രമേ അന്വേഷിക്കത്തുള്ളൂ സമാധാനം മാത്രമേ ഞാൻ പിന്തുടരത്തുള്ളൂ ദ തേർഡ് തിങ് എബ്രഹാം ഡേഡ് എവ്രി ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ദറ്റ് എബ്രഹാം ഹാഡ് ഹി വാസ് കംപാഷനറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഹി വാസ് കൺസിഡറേറ്റ് ഹി വാസ് കംപാഷനറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഹി വാസ് കൺസിഡറേറ്റ് Lot Abraham ne vittu poi right Lot left Abraham he chose his place he went to Sodom and Gomorrah God told Abraham I'm about to destroy this nation nammalukku parnene ah enne vittu poyan illiyo anubhavichotte ithra ahankaram kaanichu ponda aavashyam undayirunno ya enne vilichathondalle enne naan aadhiyam vishwasathil vannondalle avanum vannathu idakke namukku parayan sadhikkum പക്ഷെ അബ്രഹാം ഒന്നും പറഞ്ഞില്ല ഓൺ ദ ലോഡ് ഗാഡ് സെഡ് എബ്രഹാം ഐ എം അബൌട്ട് ടു ഡിസ്ട്രോയ് ദിസ് നേഷൻ ഓഫ് സാരമൻ ഗൊമോറ എബ്രഹാം സെഡ് ലോഡ് പ്ലീസ് കൻ ഐ ഇൻ അ സീഡ് ഓൺ ബിഹാഫ് ദ ലാൻഡ് കൻ ഐ പ്രേ ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് ലാൻഡ് 
Are there 50 people there that I can pray for? Are there 40 people that I can pray for? Can you at least make sure my nephew and his family are delivered from this land? You see, Abraham could have been very selfish, but Abraham made a difference. Abraham had a difference in his life. The Lord God is his only God in his life. And as a result, even in the midst of that problem and prayer and the pain, Abraham said, you know, not, not, that cannot happen that way. I need to be considerate. I need to be compassionate. I need to have the saints of God, the people of God, even if it's 50, to be delivered from that land. So Abraham maintained or became compassionate and considerate. The fourth thing that Abraham did, he had no hesitation in offering what was the most valuable for him. Adehatana Jeevatil Abraham the Jeevatil Etam Vilaria Vastu Devam Maling Vilaria Vishem Devan Chodi Chapol Adu Kodakwan Uru Madi Milay. His only son, the promised son, after all these years, he has crossed hundred years. Now the son is there, and now they've had this father-son bonding time. They've grown up together. They take care of sheep and cattle. They take care of the workers together. They're spending time together. All of a sudden, God comes and says, give me, my, give me your son back. Abraham had no problem. Abraham 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 and Ariam, eat Deva Matrami and the Devamolo, and the Magan Allah and the Devam, and the end of Magal Koda, and the Narakan Agadan Allah and the Devam, and the Abulashan Allah Devam, and the Magan Doctor Akan and the Magan Allah Devam, and the Korota Devameulu, Ah Devam Bindu Parahino, other Samba the Kiwanim, Anasari Kiwan and Manasunda, other one Abraham and the Devam Parna Paul, they even told the Japol, or a Madi Mila, Kodakuan, but a Manasun died. Ask yourself the question. Especially the parents I ask. You have dreams and aspirations for your child. You want them to be the engineer and the doctor and the PAs and the pharmacist. What if God asks your children to become missionaries? What if God asks, give me your son back. Give me your daughter back. How many of us have the confidence to say, God, here they are. How many of us the confidence say, Lord, I have no hesitation. I will not hold them back. It's not about my dreams. It's not about me living through them. It's not about them making my life comfortable. Comfortable. It's not about them taking care of me when I get old, Lord God. It's not nothing about that, Lord. If you ask me, here they are and here I am. How many of us have that confidence? How many of us can say, yes, God alone is my God. And whatever he asks, I will give without any hesitation. And I can ask the same question to young people. So your parent comes to you and says, my daughter, my son, this is what the Lord God told me. That in the coming days, you might be called to be a missionary in some place. You may have to go to a place where you don't know anybody. Perhaps you don't know the language. Perhaps you don't have enough money. And you have no place to stay. And the Lord God has told me, this is the place you're going to. I want you to start praying. How many of the young people would say, that's not what I want? How many of us have the confidence to say, yes, if the Lord God told my parent that, he will tell me the same thing. And if he tells me, I will go. Because that is a sign that the Holy God is the only God in your life. If we're willing to give what's most valuable to us, without hesitation, the moment God asks, that tells you that there is no other God in your life. How did Abraham have such a transformation? Have you ever wondered how did somebody who worshipped idols, created idols, sold idols, how did this man become such a person where he built an altar, where he pursued peace, where he was compassionate and considerate, where he was able to offer what's most valuable to him. How did this transformation take place? When I was studying the passage, this is a thought that was inspired in me. The more we have God as our God, the more the Lord God sits on the heart's throne, the more we become like him. 
എത്രത്തോളം ഈ ദൈവം നമ്മുടെ ഹൃദയത്തിന് സിംഹാസിരിക്കുന്നോ അത്രത്തോളം നമ്മൾ ദൈവത്തെ പോലെ ആകും ഇസ് എ ഗാഡ് കമ്പാഷനറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ഗാഡ് കെയറിംഗ് ഇസ് എ ഗാഡ് എ ഗാഡ് ഓഫ് പീസ് is a god who gave without hesitation the best most valuable thing for us to have did the god do that absolutely he did that so the more abraham understood god the more the abraham had god sit in his throne more the god abraham said there's only one god in my life every single day abraham's life was being transformed that he could become more and more and more like god i believe that's why god said abraham is my friend That's why God said I need to have counsel with Abraham before I make a decision how do we come to that communion because God found someone who pursued God and became like God on an everyday basis We sing song like you're all I want you're all that I need and then as pastor said during Sunday morning bible study then after the church lee after the church this bible is never touched After church there's absolutely no time spent in prayer but without any shame we sing you're all i want you're all i need people of god we need to change our our mindset our perspective we need to become more like god on a day to day basis the more we take on the attributes of god the more we realize every place i go there must be an altar set up for the holy god The more we take on the attributes of God that's where we say yes I have experienced the peace therefore I pursue this peace with all my relationships The more we experience God and his blessing there we say God you alone must sit on the throne of my heart and no one else and nothing else The more we understand how compassionate and considerate God is there we say Lord help me to be the same person to be considerate and compassionate and not be selfish and the more we take on the attributes of god the more we are gladfully giving up joyfully giving up everything that the lord god asks of you the beauty is the moment abraham understood the moment abraham obeyed his name was changed abram an exalted father becomes abraham the father of many nations or maninaya pidav nu mathram alle ippol peru behu jaadigalde pidahav nanu peru kittiyathu you know what that saying he doesn't judge us he's not looking at our current situations he is naming us based on what our future holds god is saying abraham you think people call you abram because you're an honorable father but i see something in your future you're not just an honorable father you're the father of many nations to be there So God when he changes our situations he is calling us based on what our future holds. He knows our future. He changes our names. That's what happened to Jacob's life. Jacob's name meant deceiver. But God changed his name to Israel meaning what? God prevails. Simon his name changed Simon means somebody who likes to hear. God said no, I'm changing your name to Peter, who's a rock. When the moment the Lord God becomes God in our life and he alone becomes God in our life, the Lord God changes our name. He changes our situation. So you may have called yourself defeated before. The moment the Lord God becomes God in your life, he changes your name to Victor. You may have you may have called yourself confused before but the moment God becomes God in your life your name gets changed to clarity You may have called yourself a doubter before the moment God becomes God in your life your name becomes a believer Maybe you called yourself depressed and God is saying no I can change your name to joy Maybe you called yourself reluctant and God is saying no if I am God I can change your name to boldness Maybe you called yourself to be addicted at some point and God is saying no I can change your name to be freedom. Perhaps you called yourself anxious and God is saying no if I am sitting on your throne I will change your name to confident. Maybe or not maybe all of us were alienated our names were alienated from God 
And God said, no, I call you my son and my daughter. When does that happen? The moment the Lord God and he alone becomes God in our life. A single act of obedience. A profound decision that we make. Which is to say, Lord, help me to change and remove every other God from within me. And the promise that Abraham received was not just that he changed his name. Allah. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. You'll become extremely fruitful. The third thing the Lord said, I will make nations of you. And the fourth thing the Lord said, the kings shall come from you. Abraham in the Talamare God is saying, Abraham, since you made me as your single God and the only God, I will make you a father of many nations. Nations will come from you. But not only that, Abraham, kings will come from your genealogy. People of God, can you imagine that? We as a group of people, as IPC Orlando Church family, every one of us individually decide there will be no other God in our life. We make this holy God our only God. And what happens? Our daughters and our sons, our grandsons, our granddaughters, they become the ones who set up these nations. They become the kings and the queens of this world. They are the one God uses to counsel the president and the prime ministers. God brings up into authority. We don't have to pray for God's will. We make this God. God, our only God, our generations will be taken care of by our God. Our God is fully responsible for the life of a person who is fully yielded to the Holy God. Now that the Lord your God is the only God in our life and we have removed everything else from this, I can say, yes, I can do these things. Why? Not because I have power, because the Holy God lives in me. We should be confident in asking when challenges come, when problems come, when pain comes, we should ask, is there anything too hard for my God? So people of God, last week I told you, my prayer for all the young people is God. They grow up in the fear of God. Your prayer should be, Lord, let there be no one else in my life that takes the place of God except for the Holy God who lives in the heavens. Once we have this God as our only God, we need to understand that there is a requirement that this God has. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. In English it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. This verse is pretty clear as to what God requires from us. What, what do we really offer unto the Lord? Have we given all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strengths? If I ask you, have you given money? Everybody will say yes. If I ask you, have you given your talents? 
will say, yes, I've given my talents. How about your time? Yeah, I have given my time. Young people, the choir, they come and practice multiple times a week. They give a lot of time to what's happening in this church. What about our efforts? Do we give our energy and our effort to God? Most people would say yes. We can probably list a hundred things that we have given to God. But the question is, what is the Lord requiring from you? Is he requiring money from you? Is he requiring time from you? Your abilities, your talents, you know, some people think because they can sing well, play well, preach well, that they're the favorites of God. That they have given all that they have. You know what God says? I don't need your songs. I can raise up prayer warriors from rocks and stones. I can have a donkey give my message. God doesn't need any of that from us. We offer it when it's right, yes. But that's not what the Lord God has required. The Lord God says, one thing that I require of you, love. The Lord God is saying one thing I have required of you, love. But that love is not simply a superficial love. It's a love from all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength. Oftentimes, when we say those verses, we think it's an opinion. It's not my opinion. Ephesus the Lord Jesus looked at the church in Ephesus and said, no, you do really well. You do uh, seven, eight things really well. I know your hard work. I know your patience. I know that you don't tolerate evil. I know that you don't tolerate evil. You test the apostles. You have perseverance. You don't quit. What a resume. We can look at that church and say it's a beautiful church. That church probably would say it's the model church. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, you have left your first love. Nevertheless, they didn't lose their first love. They didn't forget their first love. They left their first love. And the Holy Spirit is clearly there, adamantly there saying, I don't care for all the things that you do if you cannot love me with all your heart, your whole soul, and your strength. Come back to the first love. Come back to where I am sitting on the throne, not where the money is sitting on the throne, not where the wealth is sitting on the throne, not where your abilities are sitting on the throne. Come back where I alone sit on your throne. Give me the love that I require. Love me with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. We can leave the first love by becoming a busy church. We can leave the first love by becoming a busy Christian. You might tell me, Pastor, I've been to every mission trip. I've been to a mission trip every year. Great. That's wonderful. I've given my tithes and more. Yes, I appreciate that. I've given my talents. I've mentored many people. Beautiful. God honors that. But when the Lord God looks at you and he says, my requirement was not all those things. My requirement was founded upon the fact that you loved me with all your heart, soul, and strength. And God is asking, will God look at us and say, nevertheless? Will the Lord look at us and say, you gave me all this, but you didn't give me what I needed? 
what I asked for, what I required. The Lord God has no compromise in the way we pursue him. The Lord God has no compromise in what we offer unto him. He says simply, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Is it possible that we offer money because money is our God? Is it, is it possible that we offer our abilities to God because those abilities have become God in our life? Is it possible that we offer our time because we value the time more than the God who has given us the time? And God is saying, that's not what I want. That's not what I require. I want the love that is true from your heart. You know what happens when we love God in the way that God requires of us? We'll have no problem giving, being generous. When we love the Lord the way the Lord requires of us, we will have no problem giving up our talents and abilities to serve the Lord, to be in service. When we love God completely, we will give our time completely to the Lord and we will not waste it. When we love God completely, we become zealous for his work. There will be no laziness. I but this love becomes complete, you know how? The love is complete when the love is a sincere love. Oftentimes the world tells you, do what's good for you. You ask the question, what's in it for me if I do this? Sometimes we ask the kids to clean the house. My room is clean. That's all they say. My room is clean. What about the rest of the house? Why? Because we focus on what we need, what our need are. But our, I will tell you, our love must be a sincere love. It's not based on what we should get out of it. I read a story about this, uh, this couple who were engaged, Jimmy and Marie, they were engaged to be married. Uh, some months have gone through the engagement process and during the, uh, as it got closer to the wedding time, Murray, the fiance, uh, the, the bride told the bridegroom, listen, I cannot marry you, We're, I'm breaking off the engagement. So she wrote a letter uh, and broke off the engagement. So Jimmy had no idea what just happened, but the engagement's done. Several months later, Jimmy receives a letter from Murray. And Murray's letter says, Dear's Jimmy, no words could ever express the great unhappiness I have felt since breaking up our engagement. Please say that you'll take me back. No one could ever take the place that you had in my heart. So please forgive me. I love you, I love you, I love you. Yours forever, Murray. And by the way, congratulations on winning the lottery. This letter was published in a newspaper and the person was, wrote an article about it. If we want to love God, it doesn't happen that way. Let's not break off our engagement with the Holy God. Let's say, Lord, I want to love you. I want only you as sitting on my throne. I want to love you the best way possible. I want to love you with a sincere love, O oh God. Second, this love must be a devoted love. If other gods have taken some parts of you, some parts of your heart, some parts of your mind from within your life, it's time to reclaim all that and say, God, all of me belongs to you, completely devoted to you. If we have 50 gods in our life, our love is divided 50 different ways. So what needs to happen? All those other gods must be removed from our life and say, God, you alone, a single God lives and that way we can give 100% of our love to the Holy God. 
When we have multiple gods in our lives, we will love some gods more than the other. But when we have only one God in our life, our love, love becomes a completely devoted love. That's why the Lord God says, love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. What happens is our flesh will compete for this love. The world will complete, compete for this love. The sins that we face will compete for this love. Money will compete for this love. Careers will compete for this love. Relationships will compete for this love. And the Holy God says, no, I am not competing for your love. It is up to you to love me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. നമ്മുടെ തീരുമാനം ആയിരിക്കണം കർത്താവേ വേറെ ഒന്നും ഈ സ്നേഹത്തെ അപഹരിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് പോകത്തില്ല എൻ്റെ സ്നേഹം പൂർണ്ണ ഹൃദയത്തോടെ അങ്ങയ്ക്ക് മാത്രം സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു പറയുവാൻ അത് നമ്മുടെ തീരുമാനമായിരിക്കണം ഇറ്റ് മസ്റ്റ് ബി അവർ ഡിസിഷൻ whatever happens in our natural self is our heart has a tendency to wander away from the love of god ee deiva snehathinu maari pogan palappolum nammude hrudayathinu oru thalpriyam undagum There's a songwriter who wrote these li- lyrics oh the grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love here's my heart oh lord take it and seal it seal it for thy courts above that's the prayer we should have That's the song we should sing. We should sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. If you want to sing that song, you will sing that song. Let me quickly finish. Let me quickly finish. The third thing that makes this love a complete love is when we honor the father and the ma- and respect the master. Malaki legenathil malaki pravadanathil karthavu oru chodyam choichu njan pidavengil ende behumanam ende njan ningal yajamanam engil ennulla behumanam ennulla aadarav evide If I am your father where's the respect if I'm your master where's my honor You know when our love becomes complete when we can truly honor the father and respect the master we have imagine the lord god asking us that question devam nammalodu chodikkenda or avasthe undaganam engil angane or chodyam nammude munbaga vekkanam engil devathinte manasu athrathodum venapettu kaanum how much god's heart would have been grieved for him to ask the question people you call me father where is my honor you call me master where is my respect what god is saying is you're not loving me with all your heart all your soul and all your strength verde kartave kartave nu vilichu kondu onnu maayilla makkale deiva makkale nammal parayana deivame ange vedanippikkuna chodyam chodikkanda avasthe undaguvan ende jeevathil oru otta avasaram polum undagalle This God has a requirement love the Lord with all your heart with all your soul and all your strength. Let me pause there for this week. Hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength. In the pagal kalam nammal devasanil irikkumbol as we sit in the presence of god ask us of the question from last week to this week how many more new gods have taken place in my life or have we made the decision last week to say no no other gods shall take place of the real living god and if he alone is your god if this holy god alone is your holy god can you say lord I love you with all your heart, all my heart all my soul and all my strength and the kartave ange mathramana ende jeevathil devam aa devathe enikku poorna hridayathodum 
പൂർണ്ണ മനസ്സോടും പൂർണ്ണ ശക്തിയോടും സ്നേഹിക്കണം എനിക്കിതുവരെയും സാധിച്ചിട്ടില്ല കർത്താവെ ഇന്ന് ഈ പകൽക്കാലം ഞാൻ എന്നെ തന്നെ സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു എനിക്കത് സാധിച്ചാലേ ഒക്കത്തുള്ളൂ എൻ്റെ സ്നേഹത്തെ കവർന്നെടുക്കുന്ന അപഹരിക്കുന്ന എല്ലാ വിഷയങ്ങളെയും വസ്തുക്കളെയും മാറ്റിവെച്ചുകൊണ്ട് എൻ്റെ ദൈവത്തെ പൂർണ്ണ ഹൃദയത്തോട് സ്നേഹിക്കുവാൻ എനിക്ക് കൃപ തരണമേ എനിക്ക് ബലം തരണമേ നമുക്ക് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കാം ലെറ്റ്സ് പ്രേ ഗാഡ് എനി അതർ തിങ് ദ ടേക്സ് ദ പ്ലേസ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് ഇൻ മൈ ലൈഫ് എനി തിങ് ദ ടേക്സ് ദ ലവ് ദ ബിലോങ്സ് ടു ഗാഡ് അലോൺ ഫ്രം മൈ ലൈഫ് ലെറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഓൾ ബി റിമൂവ്ഡ് ആൻഡ് ഗിവ് മി ദ സ്ട്രെങ്ത് ഗിവ് മി ദ ഗ്രേസ് ഗിവ് മി ദ പ്രിവിലേജ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് ടു സേ മൈ ഹാർട്ട് ഇസ് സീൽഡ് ബിഫോർ ദ ഹോളി ഗാഡ് ആൻഡ് മൈ ഹാർട്ട്സ് ഡിവോഷൻ ഇസ് ഓൺലി ഫോർ ദ ഹോളി ഗാഡ് ആൻഡ് മൈ ഹാർട്ട് സിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് ലവ്സ് മൈ ഓൺലി ഗാഡ് ഷാൻ വി പ്രേ as we pray and surrender ourselves before the word of god we shall also pray that we may be ready to receive the elements of the lord's table in the palkha namal alpa samayam prarthikkumbol vadathine munbaga samarpichu prarthikkumbol appol thana prarthin karthave agada meshamel orohari aaguvan adu oru pangali aaguvan enne onnu belapaduthaname agada snehathe orkuvan അങ്ങയുടെ കരുണയും കൃപയും ഒന്ന് ആസ്വദിച്ച് മനസ്സിലാക്കി ദൈവത്തെ സ്നേഹിപ്പാൻ ഇന്ന് പകൽക്കാലം ആ മേശമിൽ പങ്കാകുമ്പോൾ അങ്ങയിൽ നിന്ന് അനുഗ്രഹം പ്രാപിക്കുവാൻ എന്നെ തന്നെ സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കാം